great cause that we're just going to have gratitude moments like falling out of our ears this evening. It's going to be awesome. If I would have known about it, I would have made myself be there to videotape and take those moments. <laughs> Our, well, you know, we may videotape some of them. Well, so, hey, you, you can know initiate what, and say, can... what are you grateful for? That'd be awesome. Exactly. Well, our, our, let me tell you what I'm grateful for. Yes, please. I am actually going to piggyback off of your story because it's quite similar to mine. I lost my father very unexpectedly right after I graduated from college. And uh, after that happening, it definitely changes you, right? There's some things that go on in your head and you're thinking, whoa, I thought life was sort of like this and now it's 100% different. So when a life-changing moment like that happens and you lose something so foundational like a parent, I feel it is almost like a veil that is lifted off of your eyes and you are just opened up to a whole nother world where you do feel, I think, a need to initiate this immediate gratefulness to the people in your life because you don't know if you will see them tomorrow and now that that's been made so real and it is I think a very prevalent thing now top of mind for me because it was like I said it played out in my life that mm -hmm. that truth and that reality is what it is you don't know how much time you have left you never do so I want to say that I'm grateful for my mom because she is the one parent that I have left and we actually battled cancer last year with my mom and in dealing with that and dealing with the thought of maybe that being the time where I'm going to lose my second parent really made me have to be that much more grateful so I'm so happy that I have this time with her that I literally get up every day thinking how am I gonna make my mom proud mm. it's my only goal in life like, of course, I have to do other things like pay a mortgage. Right. In, be in between the goals. Uh, you know, right. But they're all just things that are trying to get me back to, am I doing something to make my mom proud? Because if I'm not, then I'm doing something wrong. So I 100% understand your story and why you would feel this, I, I guess, like immediate need to try to do something because I, I literally relate to that perfectly. So tell me what is now, because I know you have a million I'm sure, yes. gratitude moments. But let's have one right here, right now on the spot. I want you to tell me right now what your gratitude moment is immediately here in the Art of Gun Studios. I am grateful to have uh, been with the, uh, der met the Derby Diddy, Derby Diddy, Derby Diddy, I say Diddy on the Derby <laughs> City Sisters, and, uh, and, and then uh, Sister Valvita talking uh, that I needed to meet you. So in this moment, I am very grateful for those connections and the fact that it led me to be able to sit here and meet you and, and the fact that you just shared that beautiful story with me uh, in that moment for your mom really has made my day. So I'm grateful oh. for your, your gratitude moment, sincerely. I love the Derby City Sisters and I, I'm, well, I'll just give you this one for free. This one's extra. Okay. <laughs> but Ryan, who is, Ryan Phillips is a very dear friend of mine and he happens to work at my salon, which I don't know how many, I don't know how you are with your hair. I understand you're a guy and I'm, I'm a chick, but I have very cantankerous hair. So it has to be treated with care. So I am ride or die with, with my salon, okay? Like there's no leaving them there. I will follow these people to the ends of the earth because they have to keep me looking like this. So Ryan and the team over there, their one big gratitude moment is what Focus Salon is. And, it is not just the hair or the makeup or the different things that they do at the salon. It's who they are as people. Right. Um, and it's a totally different feeling that I've had than any other place, which is why I say I'm, I am ride or die focused salon until the end, now that Beautiful. I have found them. But I remember being in the salon and Ryan talking to me one day and saying, can I talk to you before you leave? And it's always a happy experience being there, like I said. So of course, I'm like, hey, yeah, what's up? They support my nonprofit every single time I ask. Every single time. If it's you know, hey, I have a silent auction. They're like, Marianne, we got it. Here's some gift certificates, here's some product, great. Um, I had a huge uh, thing as part of the mayor's give a day at my office. They came, volunteered their time. And so I just knew that whatever it was, again, it was going to be something that was gonna help people. So I said, yeah, I'll take the time, let me sit down with you. So we went to lunch and very simply, he said, I have this idea and I wanna start a nonprofit. And I, sw I sort of giggled because I started one and it's hard. <laughs> so I thought, really, Ryan? Uh, are, are you sure? Because the four proper thing seems a lot easier. But I get you. I get you. Because, I, you know, honestly, I could never be in for profit. Because for me, like I told you, my goal. So obviously, right. I, I'm on the nonprofit side very squarely. 
And he told me about this group called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Funny enough, I had already just heard about them from another friend of mine, hmm. who's an LGBT conservationist in San Francisco. So it seemed kind of fate that I had just heard about this group of crazy awesome nuns that run around and I'm spread joy yeah, yeah. and break down barriers and stereotypes. I was like, this is phenomenal. And then now here's Ryan saying, yeah, yeah, and I really like them and I, I kind of want to do that. Do you think I can do that? I was like, Ryan, if anyone can do that, you absolutely nice. can do that. Nice. And I want to make sure that you do that. And so from that moment, over my chicken tenders at lunch, <laughs> Um, this idea of, of him explaining to me what his goals were was such an awesome moment and I knew at that point I was 100 with this and I was in it and even though I wear like five other hats I was like I'll just put this one on too because it has to happen and you know January of the next year BAM I remember we planned the very first meeting for the Derby City Sisters mm -hmm. and now they have I mean they have over 50 full-fledged professed sisters right now and have been the fastest growing chapter of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. He didn't even share that with me. I mean it's it's <laughs> ridiculous that it, because I really do feel like it's the right time. It is a time where fairness and gratitude moments are happening in this compassionate city and people like Ryan are helping to do that. So Sister Velveeta Von Tees, um is the, you know, professionally. Yes, yes. And I have had her and several of the other sisters on my show. I got to walk in the Pride Parade with them, and I have just been so absolutely proud. So it it made total sense to me that mm -hmm. Ryan would find someone like you and then say, hey, go talk to her, because we like to spread that joy together. It, it's definitely something that we're into. So I'm very grateful for Sister Velveeta also, because she brought us together. and. She definitely likes to bring together very cool people, which I can I can fully see that you are. So tell me, because I know you've got a big goal, and I 100% support that goal. And I know that you need a lot of people to know about this. So I'm assuming that that's why you're going on the road to tell folks, right? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm taking a tour. It's called Punching Depression from Coast to Coast with Letters of Gratitude. So I'm, uh, like I said, I'm leaving here, and, and well, that's we're very starting. Awesome. Yes. Yes, we. I am punching depression. I, I am punching it. Yes, I'm punching depression, sadness, and punching hate, uh, broken relationships, envy, um, all, all these things, chronic disease. Uh, gratitude has a place in assessing and helping people out in all aspects of their life. So basically, the beautiful thing about the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is, uh, in, in the local chapter, is we're, I'm going to be doing events all throughout the West Coast with them. So not only do I have my own groups but because of Ryan and them I'm going to be able to do this in every city so I'm going to Seattle you know I'm going to be there nice. for a week yeah I'm so excited about that I already have a couple of events I'm going down to San Francisco and into, into Oakland for about 10 days I'm going to then go down to Vegas for about five days and then I'm going to finish up in that big massive LA area for the last uh, two weeks and I'm planning on doing about 14 events but what I, I like love people to go to lettersofgratitude.org okay so that's the website that you created yeah it's dot org yeah and there are letters and videos and and the crowdfunding campaign is running right now for what I'm doing so if you want to be part of this documentary or if you'd like to come to some of these events or if you have if you'd like to even you know possibly even host an event in one of these cities depending on what's going on we I can do that listeners in those cities well, then they need to they need to go to the website lettersofgratitude.org and uh, they'll. I have friends that are sisters actually that are in those cities too. Well, well, there we go. I'm planning on meeting them, so that's well, great. Okay. Yeah, so I want to meet the Mother Teresa there in San Francisco. I'm excited about that. That'll be good times. You're, yeah. you're, you're gonna have you're gonna spread a lot of joy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a lot of moments. We're gonna do these gratitude spaces. We're gonna allow people to uh, share gratitude. I'm gonna it's all gonna be videotaped. It's like I said, it's gonna be a documentary because the amazing thing about gratitude is. Um, when I ask somebody if they're grateful, I, I am participating in being gra uh, grateful. And then when someone shares like you, you're participating in gratitude. And the amazing thing is when somebody listens to this right now, they're also actually being actively grateful because they're investing time in what gratitude is. Well, I hope my listeners are grateful. I, I think they are. So I know that I'm grateful for them. We should definitely have a gratitude moment for the listeners. Yes. For sure. Yes. Um, because honestly, without the listeners, then we're just talking to each other on microphones. That's true. Which I'm happy about. And yeah. I'm grateful for that, too. Yes. That's separate, though. Yes. But we would hope to be sharing this with other folks. And we are internet radio. So technically, 
There could be people in St. Petersburg, Russia right now and St. Petersburg, Florida, all listening to us at the same time. That's true. And I have a podcast called Liquid Gratitude. It's on iTunes. And I'm hoping that, and I just Liquid launched it, Gratitude. Liquid Gratitude. So I'm I hoping we will talk later, but I would love to have you on. Um, we could do that. We should, I just want to throw that out there. But I know that Absolutely. I, I'd be grateful for that gratitude moment. I feel like we need to have a lot of gratitude moments. I feel like I alone can probably help you get several of at least a hundred problems. Well, we uh, when I get back in town for my trip, we'll have to. I'll, I'll just buddy up with what you're doing. No, I mean because even the, your Coursera thing, like I just show up and I ask you if they're grateful for it. It's like I buddy up with any good nonprofit sure. because I just I'm just assessing the people in the in the in the group what they're grateful for, and that's what we share. It isn't like I'm I'm putting a stamp and some sort of ad in there. It's it's straight up what it is, you know. And I, I probably should say that again, we are in a very what I call a compassionate city. Because one thing that people don't necessarily know about Louisville is that there are over 3,000 not-for-profits wow. in this city. Did you know that? Chris? No, I did not know that. Okay, well, see, I think that A lot that's of people I need to meet. <laughs> you know, people want to do good things. This city is filled with good people wanting to do good things. And that's why I do this show, because there's so many of them that I don't really have to work hard to get people to come on my show, because there's people like you constantly doing cool things. So maybe I just told everyone my secret. I'm not trying to cheat, Dad. Don't look at me like that. No, but honestly, I, I really don't have to work to come up with content for Florida Arts. I am so grateful for that. And that's why I, I am staying a Louisvillean, tried and true, because I don't know that there's any other place where people do this, that people act like this, and they want to see their city be a better place. They're taking every day as a chance to make it a little bit better. And you obviously are doing that. You are obviously doing that. So I am super grateful for you. Oh, thank you, Marianne. And I, I appreciate you, uh, what you're doing, all the organizations, what you're doing. And, and on my end, what I'm doing, I, I find that talking about gratitude to people is the easiest, lightest pitch you can ever toss anybody. Yeah. So well, it's, and that's it's, what I'm saying. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> you know, there are, there are some folks that I've met along the way that have just, you know, not been grateful at the moment. But I even say, you know what, that doesn't mean they're not totally grateful. They're probably grateful, they just didn't want to be grateful in front of me. Right, right, right. Which is fine. So I think in that respect, I'm gonna leave you with this is <laughs> this is my little tip. Okay. Because I had a thought for those people out there that maybe don't want, you know, to be so public right. with their gratitude moment, it's okay. That's maybe right. you just write it down and you put it in an envelope for yourself. That's true. Or you go like real world or like Big Brother diary style. Well, we have an anonymous setting too, so they could actually they could still we'll they could still it. actually post and not and not just just to go through the action. When the site's actually running, running, there'll be a journal section. Actually, no, what it'll be is it'll be a me section where you can write in your gratitude, set it on the me, and then it's just on your wall. And it's just you, so that so people can still thing. yeah. Because yeah. I, I I think what they, okay, people go like, people yes. are like people are like no, I can't. What is this? I'm like no, we'll do anonymous. I'm like no, they don't even want to do anonymous. Well, that's fine. I just want them to go through the actions, like you're saying. I just want people to. I want people to be actively grateful, which could be exactly. as simple as you're writing down what you're grateful for in the morning. It takes a second to do. It's so easy. It'll change your life. So now I know that when when we started here this morning, we said that you were going to be the main spokesman because Chris, this is your gig, and I'm very proud of that. But I started off by saying, I don't know, I feel like your dad kind of gets the credit overall because he made you. So if it weren't for him having made you with your mom, then you wouldn't really have this moment anyway. Right? Oh, I'm very grateful for right. my father. So, you wanted me to go into that a little more. <laughs> I mean, I, want, I feel like I want to, I know dad's holding the camera and he's doing double duty, but I'd like to see if you take the camera for a second. And I want dad to get on the mic real quick oh, because- Give him a minute, sure. I want 